again. I had a request in class to go over another 2D projectile motion question. So here we're going to be going over this question together. Remember, when you're doing a 2D projectile motion question, what you're trying to do is you're trying to break the 2D problem into two single 1D motion problems. That's exactly what we're going to do in a 2D projectile motion, is looking at the X and Y vectors independently of each other. Let's read the problem together. A football is kicked off the ground with an initial velocity of VI. So we're not given the initial velocity. And an angle of theta above the horizontal. The football lands on the ground 67 meters away from where the football was kicked. If the football reaches a maximum height of 13 meters, what was the initial velocity of the football being kicked? Step one of problem solving, trying to visualize the motion. You can draw a picture for this one. Here I'm going to draw a 2D projectile motion and I'm going to label some of the variables that I know. Here is my projectile. It's going to come off the ground and back to the ground again. It's going to be launched with some initial velocity at some angle theta. The football is kicked 67 meters away. I am going to use green for my horizontal components. Here we have a range of 67 meters. We have maximum height of 13 meters. The problem wants us to find the initial velocity, but remember, anything that is a vector, you have to find both magnitude and direction. This question, we cannot just find vi, the initial velocity, we need to also find the angle above the horizontal as well. Usually when you see a 2D vector, it might be easier to find the vector's two components before putting them together. So what I mean is, if you have your initial velocity here, this initial velocity has an initial x component or horizontal component, and it also has an initial vertical component as well. If we find vi y and vi x, we will be able to find vi initial velocity as well as the angle itself. In a 2D problem, it's oftentimes a good idea to draw yourself a table separating our x and y values. This represents how we're going to calculate vertical and horizontal components independently of each other. The vertical components, we know h max. This is, I believe, 13 meters. We also know that the acceleration due to gravity, negative, be careful of directions. This is negative 9.81 because I am suggesting that in the downwards direction, it is negative or going up is positive. So labeling your directions is very important. We also know at the maximum height, the vertical component of the velocity is zero. We also want to find VIY. So these are what we're given. And notice that this one right over here, we're not given the VFY, but we know that because of the nature of projectile motion. As for the horizontal components, we have our range, x. This is, I believe, 67 meters given in the problem. We want to find the vix. This is the horizontal velocity component. And because there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction, this is going to stay constant throughout the entire motion. You might be wondering, there's probably one more variable we're missing. And you're right, this one is time of flight. And as I mentioned in class, time of flight is the value that ties your x and your y components together. It's like the bridge between the two sides of your table. If you know the time of flight for using one side of the table to calculate it, you can use it on the other side of the table to calculate something else. And also you might recall that depending on how long the ball or the projectile is in flight, the further down is going to be able to travel horizontally. So time of flight is a very important variable we want to find. Let's see what we can do. Let's try to work with our y components first. We're going to try to find viy. If we take a look at what we have, you might think about, ooh, this particular kinematics equation could be useful. vfy squared equals 2 viy squared plus 2 a. Instead of s, I'm going to write h max because I'm going to look at the initial velocity before the ball reaches the maximum height. I'm going to isolate for viy. 
I'm going to subtract 2a h max from both sides of our equation. And this one gives us the fy squared minus 2a h max equals to viy squared. Second, we're going, to, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And also, at the same time, we can deal with the vfy here because this one we know is zero. After this step, we are left with, I'm going to move viy squared to the other side, or in this case, viy being equal to the square root of negative 2ah max. Putting in our variables, we have the square root of negative 2, negative 9.81 for gravity, and for h max, 13 meters. Notice that the two negatives here cancel out. So I'm going to put that into our calculator. We have 2 times 9.81 times 13, and then taking the square root, this is 15.97 meters per second. I'm actually going to store that on this calculator as the y component. That way I keep all my significant digits. Okay, so I'm not going to round until the very end when I need to. I'm going to write this guy over here, 15.97 meters per second. Okay, so we got the viy. Now we just need the vix, then we should be good. So let's move over. And we have the right side, horizontal components. Our object is traveling horizontally at a constant velocity. So here, that's where we can use vix equals to our distance over time, or in this case, our range over time of flight. Now, I see some people making this mistake on their quizzes, is using this equation when there is acceleration. Please do not use this equation when there is acceleration. This equation assumes that your object is traveling at a constant velocity. And we notice that if we want to find vix, we need both the range and the time of flight, which we don't have. So we need to find the time of flight. We can't use our horizontal components to find it because this is all the information we have, but we could use our vertical component variables to find that. We'll, we probably do have enough information. Based off of the information we have, this over here is only talking about how long it takes the projectile to move up. So that is the time of flight from here to here. When we calculate this, we can only calculate the time it takes the object to move up. But we want the whole time. We want all of this. We want the time of flight, not just the time it takes to go up. Now recall in the notes what we covered in class that the time of flight is really two times the time it takes for the ball, the football to go up. Because if you take a look at the symmetry of a projectile motion, the time it takes for the ball to move upwards is the same time it takes a ball to move down. So if we double the time going up, this gives us the total time of flight. In this case, based off of the information I have, I am able to find the time it takes for the football to go up. In this one, if we take a look at what we have, there are many ways to calculate this, but the easiest way using our kinematics equations you might have figured is the Fy equals to viy plus acceleration times time. The final vertical velocity here is zero, so we can take that away. And isolating for t, and I'm going to write t up. We're going to isolate for t up. We're going to subtract both sides of the equation with vi, and this leaves us with negative vi equals to a t up. Dividing both sides by a, we get t up is equal to negative vi divided by a. Substituting our values in, we have negative, I believe is 15.97 meters per second, divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Notice the negatives cancel out again. And this one, we get, I'm just going to divide that by 9.81, giving us the time going up is 1.627, or 8. 1.627 dot 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 seconds. This is the time it takes for the ball to go up. Okay. If we want the total time of flight, we need to multiply that by 2. So that will be 2 times r 1.62 dot 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 seconds. This one gives us 3.25. 3.25 dot 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 seconds. And here I am not going to round this value. 
In fact, I'm going to actually store this as T on my calculator so I keep all my significant digits in case I lose a number. I can write this number over here now that I know the time of flight. And because of that, I can now solve for VIX because I have everything. I have a range, which is 67 meters, as well as the, as the time, 3.25 dot dot dot. So putting that into my calculator, I have 67 divided by my answer or our, my store value T. This gives me 20.577 meters per second. And again, I'm going to store this as X on my calculator so I know where to find it later. Okay, so this is 20.577 meters per second. Beautiful. Now we have VIX, VIY. We can go ahead to find VI. Going back to vector addition, we have the horizontal velocity, which is 20.577, and we have our vertical which is 15.97 meters per second and our resultant which is our initial velocity we can now use Pythagoras to help us find VI so our VI is equal to the square root of 15.97 squared plus 20.577 squared and this one gives us I'm going to square my answer plus the vertical one 15 squared and i'm going to take the square root this gives me 26 meters per second we are not done because as a vector a vector needs direction to find our direction we need to find our angle here why we can use our sokotoa this one's our tan theta opposite over adjacent this is 15.97 meters per second over 20 Point five seven seven dot dot meters per second. Taking the inverse of tan on your calculator, we get this is alpha vertical divided by alpha horizontal, and taking the inverse tan, this gives us thirty seven point eight degrees, or rounded up to two significant figures, thirty eight degrees above the horizontal. And in our final answer, we can write this as twenty six meters per second at thirty eight degrees above the horizontal. And here we have it. This is a typical. 2D projectile motion question. So recap on some of the key points. Make sure you label your directions. Positive and negatives are important. Separating your components into Y and X. Doing the 2D projectile motion questions as two separate 1D problem. Okay, so doing, making sure you draw your tables. Notice that the time of flight is the bridge between your Y and X components on your two sides of your table. Hope you found this video helpful. Shoot me an email if you need any other further examples or extra problems and I will see you guys next week.